and welcome. Congratulations, in fact, you've made it this far. It's not by happenstance that you're listening to this message. Now, if you've not hit the alerts button or subscribe button, do so immediately so you don't miss anything that comes hot off the press. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you seven mindsets of highly successful people, highly successful and happy people. I'll just pop that in there too, okay? So, ready? Let's dive in. Change your mindset, change your life. It sounds so easy, yet many of us tell ourselves it's too late to change careers or that we don't have enough time to learn something new. Now, living with these limiting beliefs creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. We believe we can't, so we don't. If we instead live in terms of I can and I will, imagine what we could achieve. Could achieve great things. I believe our thoughts of incredible power over our everyday lives and that our moods and behaviours are a reflection of how we think. So here what you'll discover is seven hacks to ensure that you're always in the right frame of mind to be successful and happy. Now it starts with imagining possibilities instead of focusing on roadblocks. And roadblocks are inevitable. Okay, it doesn't matter how much you set yourself up. What we're dealing with is what you can control, not what you cannot control. What you can control is more than enough. Self-control, having the right tools, is essential. Literally anyone can transform the mindset and learn to ask, can you imagine too? So here are the seven mindsets of highly successful people. So we'll start with number one. Get rid of the old mindset and focus on growth. So let's say you feel like you're not getting ahead at work. With a fixed mindset, a fixed mindset says the situation is the way it is and it will never change no matter what you do. A growth mindset says you can create change if you work hard, adapt to feedback and implement strategies for personal development. It goes without saying which people go further in their careers the proofs in the pudding. I mean, you can literally look at that and you can calculate it. You are what you think and whatever you're focusing on, basically that's, you're gonna get more of that. It comes down to the difference between limiting and empowering beliefs. However, if you start to believe in your capacity to achieve greatness, what's gonna happen? You'll find that everything in your life will fully suit. We'll move on to number two. Adopt an abundance mentality rather than a scarcity mentality. So imagine working for a company and there's one person that's responsible for 80% of the results, the good results that you get inside of the company. Let's say we use the 80-20 rule, the Prado principle. And that person that's getting the 80% is like, hold on, I've got an idea. I'm going solo, I'm setting up independently. And one of my own business and that person decides to leave. Now that company are going to be in a bit of a pickle, right? Now you can either have a scarcity mentality being in a position like that or you can have an abundance mentality. You could think to yourself, hold on a second, top earners left, where does that leave us? We wasn't as good as the top earner. However, this is opportunity knocking on the door. I can say for myself that I was stuck in a scarcity mentality and I thought there was only enough success for just a couple of people or a few people. But ever since I've learned that this kind of thinking breeds a culture of paranoia where everyone lives in a state of fear. When you switch to the, when you switch to the abundance mentality, everyone benefits because you start sharing ideas, you're not competing against each other, you're looking at areas where there's strengths and other areas where people are being strengthened, also known as weaknesses, right? And you work more effectively as a team because I believe complacency can set in and you can expect a person that's trailblazing to stay in that lane and expect that person to do all the work, you know, oftentimes, people can think like this which is a scarcity mentality mind you 
you can be thinking to yourself, oh, that other person's great at what they do, we'll just let them go, trailblaze, do all the work while we just sit down on our backsides and get paid a paycheck at the end of the month. So I think an abundance mentality, it sparks creation. You start recognizing that there's more than enough success to go all around. So being in that position means that you freed yourself from limitations. Number three, stop being afraid of failure, but be willing to fail. I've got this thing and it goes like this. There's no such thing as failure, just feedback. I've found that the number one reasons why entrepreneurs don't succeed is because they are afraid to fail. That fear can even keep them from starting something in the first place. The fact of the matter is this, no one ever fell to the top of the mountain, right? You can't reach the peak unless you take that first step. So I believe in philosophy, WTF, willing to fail. <laughs> because the only way to grow is to make mistakes. Risk is scary. Risk is scary, but stagnation is even worse. Think about that. And the more that you believe you'll fail is the more that you will fail because you're asking indirectly to fail. You see, if you're not taking chances, you're failing by default. So you're better off taking the chance. Number four, create long-term visions rather than short-term goals. And here's why. You can't reach a destination if you don't know where you're going. Same goes if you're climbing the corporate ladder, switching jobs, or if you're starting a new business. You see, before you can create a strategy and set your short-term goals, you need to write a long-term vision of success. You see, when it comes to me, myself and I, I've always been concerned about where I'm going rather than how I'm going to get there. So I consider myself to be a visionary entrepreneur. So for me, it's not a matter of like blindly putting one foot in front of the other. It's about shooting up to the moon and landing on the stars. And that will bring my vision safely back down to planet Earth. You see, if you look at your vision like a painted picture, and you've got these crystal clear snapshots of how your business will look, how your business will feel and act every five years. It's a way of keeping everyone aligned and motivated to succeed as a team. Number five, never be afraid to break the rules. It's an opportunity to learn. It made me a better entrepreneur. You see, I remember growing up in a place called Nottingham, Radford. Um, Despite the things that were going off, stuff teachers told me, the things my parents would say, I wasn't held back by these things. When I got myself in a bit of trouble here and there, if anything, I found that it made me much more palatable as an entrepreneur. When we look at risk averse or risk averse people who stay in the little comfort zones, you know, you look at the behavior of a risk averse person, they're hardly ever leaders. Now it's the people that get up, move fast and break things and defy convention who change the world. You can take a look around, you can see them all. Every person that you can see that have done great things, you know that they've gone through experiences and they have created their own rules, bent rules, made certain decisions, called them mistakes. You see, success is all about grit, the guts, gumption, unction to function. So if you want to progress your career, it's best that you get comfortable in getting them crowns out and colouring outside of the lines. We find that there's lots of treasure there. So we'll move on to number six, right? Listen to what your gut is saying. Serious thing here. Now, I know that at times we can overthink things. Right? We can overthink once in a while, which is perfectly fine. However, if you second guess every single decision you're making, you'll never get anything done. Remember this, overthinking also leads to rumination the destructive and potential career ruining process of dwelling in the past. The past is a memory, okay? It exists, it's a memory, but it's in the past. Very important to remember. Now, in my experience, I would say I've had over 38 years of experience in business. I started out making clothes, selling music, selling beats, making beats on a keyboard, and selling them to people that were rappers. Um, selling my drumming and music, musical services and skills to recording artists. 
you know, running around to shops, selling items, selling clothes that I've made, and tapping into wholesale, tapping into supply on demand, and also tapping into sales on return, where you'll take some items into a clothing store, like John Lewis, Debenhams, House of Fraser, and independent stores as well, and having a line of clothes inside them stores, inside the shops. And as the items get sold, you then get a commission and the shopkeeper will then keep a cut. So from a young age, these are the things that I started to tap into. And I've learned how important it is to make quick and really tough decisions as well. So stop letting the lizard brain control your thoughts and actions. Instead, take charge and start acting on instinct. It's very important. In most cases, your intuition will steer you in the right direction. So we'll move on to number seven. Let positivity be flowing in all that you do. Let positivity be flowing like fluid in all that you do. Now, if you set out to change just one thing about the way you think, this should be it. Now, it's scientifically proven that optimists are happier and more successful than pessimists. Putting this into its right context, provided they're realistic about goals and outcomes. Now me, as an eternal optimist, I always try to see good in every situation. If I'm falling short on some aspect of the business, I don't see it as doom and gloom. I know it's just a temporary obstacle, a temporary challenge that I'm overcoming. So that's how I see things. That's how I've developed my mind to perceive things based upon my experiences and outcomes and my calculations. Good thing about positivity is it breathes off its own kind. So the light becomes lighter, darkness becomes darker. So the more you are positive about certain things, the more you're going to attract them very things that are vibrating on that same wavelength. Having that half full or half empty attitude, you know, perception, it will start to guide you into everything you do. Now the truth is success doesn't automatically bring you happiness. I know this 100%. Based upon my experiences, keeping a positive mindset will invite success into your life. And all it takes is a few shifts in your thinking in order for you to become your best authentic self. There you go, so that's your seven mindsets of highly successful and happy people. And I hope you've been blessed by that. Do contact me if you're in need of any coaching services and also content and material. You can find some details in the description box below that will take you to a place that is rich of resources that will add a tremendous value to you and yours. If you've got any comments, any feedback you would like to share, do use the comment section below. Hook me up, let's continue to build. So that's it from me, Kevin Clark, believing in you. And remember, stay focused. God bless. Bye now.